we left Tilbury on the afternoon evening of the 18th of June and we arrived off the coast of Normandy on the morning of the 19th of June and uh, at that time there was a big storm had blown up, uh, massive waves and the ships wallowing about uh, and of course that lasted for three days and we were seasick very uh, apprehensive about what we were going into because there was a terrific noise because the naval ships were firing their big guns, the 15 inch guns, uh, way out to sea, firing them ashore. Uh, and the, uh, our own artillery ashore were, were firing, the 25 pounders and the four fives. And then there was the Germans who were firing back. Um, then there was thousands and thousands of ships, about 4,000 ships I would say, uh, rolling about in the sea. And uh, we didn't get many raids from the Germans because uh, we had a lot of um, barrage balloons which uh, were mm. on the ships mm. to prevent the, the planes from coming down. Plus the fact I think the RAF had su superiority, you know, mm. over the Germans. Mm. Uh, and then on the 22nd, we then received orders that we were to land. The infantry went off first and then followed by uh, ourselves, the gunners, and then the other units, the, the RESC and people like that. Uh, and uh, uh, I went down with a jeep off the landing uh, ship into the water, and the, the vehicles were all waterproofed, so mm. you could go through mm. sort of two foot of water without any damage. Mm. And of course, the, the orders were foot hard down on the accelerator and just go. Mm. And then when we got onto the beach, there was uh, the military policemen who were really uh, taking control of all the traffic coming off and um, they were directing us where to go. And uh, depending on what sort of area you were going to, you had to follow a different route. So the, they marked the routes with the, the four, um, from the pack of cards, the, the spades, clubs, diamonds and hearts. And of course my route was club, to follow club route. Mm. And after we cleared the beach, we were then uh, put into a marshalling area where you deproofed de the vehicles, took the waterproofing off the vehicles and the extension off the exhaust. And then, of course, we were given a, a grid reference of where to, to move to. Uh, and when we arrived at that grid reference, then that was our start point. We, we landed on the 20, got ashore on the 22nd. Our first battle was the 25th. And the first battle was a place called... Uh, uh, Cheve, C H E U V. And that was our first battle, and we'd taken over that time from the 15 Scottish Division, and they had partly cleared that village, uh, and then we finished it off, and then uh, from there, of course, uh, we advanced uh, very slowly because the Germans were then getting reinforcements, uh, getting more tanks. SS Panzer divisions coming into the area and uh, our next bigger objective from that we, we uh, battled for a few more villages Baron and uh, Matlot I think was two of the villages which we, we captured and then we had this big battle of Hill 112 uh, which uh, started uh, I think was the 9th of the 9th of July when our f we first started to try and take that uh, and uh, uh, th that was a very uh, high high ground and, and from the top when we arrived on the top of Hill 112 after we'd captured it which was about a fortnight later you could overlook Calm and you could very nearly see to the the beach so the Germans really had a, a magnificent view of all the activity going on all around uh, and in consequence during the daytime you could hardly move mm. as soon as you popped your head up there was there was fire mm. so a lot of the movement was at night they had Tiger tanks up there and with their 88 millimeter guns who were better guns than what we had, you know, for, for anti-tank guns. Mm -hmm. And of course, every time we got very nearly to the top of the hill, they counter-attacked and, and drove us back. Uh, we got up there twice and were driven back. Mm -hmm. uh, we lost so many men that uh, they had to disband, disband another division to reinforce us. Mm -hmm. On the hill itself, over that period, there were 7,000 casualties. I don't know how many were killed or how many was wounded. It was just 7,000 casualties. That was wounded. British, uh, British yes. Uh, and there were 400 tanks. 
So, I mean, it was, it was a big battle. Mm. And only because the Germans were, knew that it was a strategic point mm. and, and, you know, made sure mm. that they were going to hold it. Mm. And we go to the Cenotaph here uh, and commemorate all the people who, mm -hmm. who were killed in, in, in the Second World War, mm. uh, particularly in, in Normandy and France and in um, Belgium and Holland and Germany. But going back to where the battle actually took place, you know, it really brings it home to you and, and uh, you, uh, you then, uh, you know, realise how lucky you are sure. to get back. Mm. And I mean, some of the scenes there were horrendous. Mm. You know, when uh, the shell lands and, and, and they get hit, I mean, the body just gets flown apart. Mm. And, uh, and, you know, you have to pick up the pieces, put them in their blanket, because you all had a blanket, carried a blanket, and uh, he put him in the, in the blanket, buried him, put his rifle in the ground with a helmet on top. All those chaps who lost their lives have given us freedom. You know, we wouldn't have had any freedom if we had lost the war, yeah. because Hitler would have come in and, and of course, um, well, we'd all be speaking German now. <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> So I think it was a good thing because it gave us freedom and everybody's enjoying that now.